Yes, Lord. Yo, yo, yo. Peace and riches, blessings. Sending you all my love, all my good vibes. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome back to the Burn Out Washburn podcast. I've got a beautiful episode in store for you today that's going to raise your vibration. I want to talk a little bit about self love and investing in yourself. A lot of us are good at giving, but we might not be the best at giving to ourselves. And for years, I thought forms of self-care were selfish, but self-love is never selfish. You know, we're all one, so when you, you can't give to someone else without giving to yourself, and you can't give to yourself without benefiting everyone else you love too. So I had a beautiful day today, and this whole week's been beautiful. And I just keep up-leveling my self-love. And so I want to talk about some of the ways that I'm doing that. So yesterday I got I got my first massage. It was actually a massage chair, but it was a really, really expensive, nice massage chair. And I allowed myself to sit in it for like 45 minutes. And I realized I'd never really gotten a massage before. I have like one one or two home girls that practice massage, like, you know, lace me up a little bit when I've been chilling at their house, hanging out with them. But I've never, I've never really like gone in and gotten a massage. And I was sitting in this massage chair yesterday because I've just been focusing, especially the last few weeks, just on raising my vibration and investing in my well-being So I can be a better person. I want to be the best possible person I can be. I want to live an extraordinary life. I want to be a world-class leader. I want to be an amazing dad. And I already am all those things, but I want to continue to improve all those things on so many levels. So I've been investing in higher quality foods and investing time in nature and investing in coaches and mentors that can help me level up and just, you know, like... I used to drink tap water. Now I invest in nice quality water. But anyway, I was sitting in this massage chair and I realized like, how come I never gotten a massage? And like, let's take, let's flash back a couple weeks. One of my homeboys that seems to always be doing pretty well. Like I've never heard him once ever complain about money or he he seems like he's always in a good space and like he's, he's doing well. And he was like, oh, I'm I'm running late. I got to go to my massage appointment. And I was like, didn't you just barely get a massage? And he's like, oh, yeah, I get them every week. And I was like, damn, every week? Like, homeboy loves himself. That's what's up. And I noticed a lot of my mentors do the same thing. A lot of my biggest uh, mentors in entrepreneurship and health and wellness, they are not afraid to go get massages. They're not afraid to invest in float tanks, into cryotherapy, into organic food, like... You know, buying a piece of organic produce is actually, or better yet, getting it from a permaculture collective or uh, uh, some type of farm-to-table situation or farmer's market or something like that. It might cost you a few cents more, but it's an investment in your well-being and it helps the earth. And I just noticed all these people I look up to were like, um, quote-unquote, air quote, indulging in things that I always considered like luxury or bougie. And now they're becoming a part of my life and and my life is getting better on all levels. And so I've been doing some serious investing in myself. And when I say investing, I don't just mean monetarily. I mean your time-wise, like where you spend time with, who you hang out with, or where you spend time at, who you hang out with, what types of foods enter your body what podcasts you're listening to, what YouTube channels you subscribe to, what movies you're watching on Netflix. Like these are all investments in these. And, you know, it's an easy example with with money. Let's say you invest in a brand new car off the lot. A material investment like that is going to bring you like 15 minutes of joy, but then it immediately goes down in value and loses thousands of dollars in value the second you drive it off the lot. So that would be an investment that ends up not yielding a good return on investment. 
or maybe you invest in some terrible stocks or you go gamble and you lose all your money. That, those could be considered bad investments because you, you got less than what you paid for in return. With a good investment, you get more than what you invested. You get back 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times of what you paid or what, how much time you spent. You know what I mean? For every, for every 20 minutes I invest in meditation, I get like, it feels like I get like two years of blessings added onto my life. And that might be an exaggeration, but that's really how it feels. So anyway, I was like, I was sitting in this massage chair the other day, and I was like, or yesterday, and I was just like, this feels good. Like, I'm drinking like a a ten dollar superfood elixir drink that's like super high quality, and that might seem like bougie to spend ten bucks on a drink, but like I used to spend more than that on some pizza or some fast food. You know what I mean? And that was a bad investment. I could spend, you know, you spend 10 bucks at Wendy's or McDonald's and and I'm not judging anyone. All these words are always coming from love. If you if you listen to my podcast episodes before, you know that I have a strong desire to help people improve their lives and sometimes that comes with a little bit of harsh truth, but it's never it's never judgment or criticism or like me thinking I'm above you or anyway. So if you eat McDonald's or whatever, like this is just some truth for you to think about. This is not me saying I'm better than you because I don't do that. Like, so don't ever get it twisted. I love you. And that's the only reason we're talking right now. But anyway, if you invest in some McDonald's or some like terrible factory farm animal products that are just like not going to be good for you, um, you're getting less energy, you're getting a poorer quality of sleep, you're going to end up having to spend more money on doctor visits, on supplements, on new, on um, medicine, on, you know, all sorts of things. Like, I can't even tell you, like, my mom didn't take care of her health, and she... It was such a ridiculous amount of money to try and keep her alive towards the end of her life. She was like, what, can you guys just let me die, please? Because I'm spending like 10 Gs a month on this one medication that's just making me feel like shit. And it's not like she had that kind of money laying around. So I was like, we're, you know, going into debt basically to try and pay for stuff to keep her alive. But if she would have invested in a different lifestyle years ago then she wouldn't have had to spend all this money. It's just like if you invest in a lemon, that's what they call if you get a, a shitty-ass car that just breaks down on you a lot, and then you're going to spend more and whatever, you know. So if you invest in McDonald's, then you're going to end up having to pay more to, you know, get a gym pass and to go to doctors and whatever. But if you invest in the, the good stuff, the superfoods, healthy organic stuff, you're just going to have all this energy, you're going to make more money because of it, you're going to sleep better, you're just going to be resonating on a higher frequency. So I was sitting there in this massage chair and I was thinking about like, wow, this is cool, I feel good, like this feels really good, not that I even like, um, it's, I wasn't like in pain or anything, I wasn't getting a massage because like, oh, my neck is really killing me and I need to go get a massage to try to figure this out. Like, I was already feeling better than I've felt in months. And I decided to invest in a massage just simply to help rewire my subconscious and, and my nervous system and my body that like, I'm deserving of being taken good care of. I'm, I'm worthy of being pampered in luxuries. I'm worthy of eating the highest quality foods. And so I thought about my homie that gets a massage every week and some of my mentors that get frequent massages. And I was like, how come I've never done that? And I traced it back to my old programming from a kid. I remember being a little kid and I think my dad was going in to get a massage or something. And I said, oh, I want a massage. Like, I would, I really need a massage. And my dad was like, <laughs> are you kidding me? You don't need a massage. And like, he basically like basically told me I didn't deserve a massage. And this is not to, like, say anything bad about him. It's just kind of like, you know, it's a, it's an older paradigm that's kind of fading in society, hopefully. But 
Like, you know, what do you need a massage? You're like a little kid, da da da, and you're, and like, granted, maybe a little kid doesn't need one as bad, but basically, he was saying, like, I didn't deserve one because my life wasn't hard. And, you know, but any, everyone's life is hard to them. Like, it's like, it doesn't matter. Like, it, you can compare things to people, but for no matter where you're at, you know, my daughter's five years old and she has like the most amazing life ever in my eyes, but she still thinks her life is hard sometimes. Like she'll still complain if she has to do something like it's just natural. You know what I mean? And not to like my daughter's amazing. Like she's just such a little sweetheart. But if she asked me for a massage or something, I'll be like, heck yeah, you do. let's go get you a nice massage. Um, just to help her program and, re- and wire it in that she deserves it. So I grew up all these years never getting a massage, thinking like, you know, if I were to spend 40 bucks on a massage, that would be like, I don't know, like it'd be selfish and greedy. Like, who am I to get a massage? And so I realized like I got all this negative programming that I picked up from family and society thinking I didn't deserve certain things. And as I'm doing a lot of this trauma healing and a lot of growth and a lot of just spiritual self-development work. I'm, I'm rewiring those things and just training myself that I do deserve all these things and I am worthy of all this stuff that we're talking about. So that's why I even got the massage. It wasn't even that I like was sore or anything at all. And it raised my vibration. I felt more deserving. I felt more abundant. I felt more blessed. I feel like I'm taking care of myself. Like this is my vehicle in life, this body. I was only given one body and I got to take care of it. I got to treat it like gold, like a temple. You know, they say your body is your temple. So you got to treat that. You wouldn't walk into a temple with a bunch of like just throwing all this stuff over in a, in a sacred temple and making a mess and treating it like shit. It's like, no, you walk in a sacred temple, you're going to take your shoes off and be reverent and be kind and appreciate the space that you're in. So that's what I'm learning to do with my body. And today I did a lot um, a lot more of that. I actually invested in a, a membership at this place called Water Fusions that I've talked about, I think, on the last episode. It's a place in Sugar House, Utah, where you can, you can get, like, DNA scans. They have all these superfood elixirs and juices and smoothies and snacks that just can take your health to an extraordinary level. All these amazing uh, minerals and supplements and vitamins and things like that that can really help you. They have an oxygen bar, massage uh, chairs, uh, meditation pods, and just all this stuff to like nurture your body and help help this machine, help this vehicle perform at its absolute best. So you have all this vitality and energy and you can go out there and live your life to the fullest. Like... I love being out in nature. I love hiking. And the more I take good care of myself, the easier it is for me to do those things that I love. I can just run up a mountain at full speed now and feel amazing. And there's so many, like, levels to this. You know what I'm saying? There's so many people that are just, like, way healthier than I am even. And then, you know, I'm stepping out from, you know, five years ago, I was eating fast food, I was drinking soda, I was smoking cigarettes, I was drinking booze, you know, even just a few months ago, I was still smoking pot every day, and now I'm just, I'm letting go of all those things that don't, that no longer serve me, and sometimes it's uncomfortable, like, I'll be candid with you guys right now, I really, like, feel like blazing one down, but I'm just sitting in this space of, like, yo, that's my old program, That's my old paradigm that got certain joy and like a little quick serotonin boost from blazing some herbs. And I'm not saying herbs are bad or anything. There's a lot of um, medicinal properties for cannabis. And, you know, I'm still be I'm still actually using CBD products, but I just stopped blazing THC for the last like few days and I've already been feeling better. And I'm not saying I'm never going to blaze again, but I'm just I'm checking my relationship with it and I'm blazing less. And realizing that, like, I don't need all these old things. Like, I let go of cigarettes. I let go of drinking. I let go of fast food. Let go of soda. And it's it's difficult at first because you really want those things. You got your um, your reptilian brain that's like, I need that. I want that. And you know, it's 
the urges come, but like the biggest form of self love, since this episode is really all about up leveling your self love, is discipline. Discipline is like the least talked about form of self love. Discipline equals freedom. And like it's like delaying gratification, you know what I mean? Like I I want I could get the quick the quick high from blazing one down or I could get a couple seconds of joy from smoking a cigarette. But I know that deep down in my higher self is telling me that it's those things are probably going to lower my very vibration. And there might be a time and place like I smoked a spliff with my boy Claudio the other day and it was fucking lovely. And it was my first time doing that in a while, and I actually really enjoyed it. So there's a time and place, but I'm just checking my relationship with all these things and um, taking better care of myself. Like, I took three baths today, you know, partially because I was just, I got cold a couple times because I was fasting, and sometimes when I fast, I, like, sweat a lot because I'm detoxing, and then you're out in the cold when you're sweating, you get cold, and then a nice hot bath with some bath salts is lovely. But I bet I met I I just recently went from meditating once a day to like two or three times a day now, and it's made a profound impact in my life. So I'm just getting more disciplined on the things that I know are good for me, and I'm more disciplined on letting go of the things that I don't think are the best for me. So it's taking care of myself as a priority and it's not and it's not selfish it's because i want to serve at the highest level i want to uplift and inspire and help people and if i don't have energy or if i'm sick or and i'm not saying you're going to never get sick again if you do these things like you know but you're going to have more energy when you invest in yourself i can be a way better dad when i'm taking care of myself if i eat like shit and i'm just low vibe and like kind of digesting and um, you know, one thing that really, really, really messes up your serotonin uh, production, which is your happy chemicals. One of them, one of them, you know, there's a lot of happy chemicals like dopamine and um, norepinephrine and all these things. But one thing that really messes up those chemicals is like refined sugars and carbs and just eating too much in general makes it really hard to be happy. It, re- it makes it really hard to be your higher self. So, if I'm doing things that are no that are not good for me, just so I can get a few seconds of mouth pleasure, I'm doing a disservice to my daughter. I'm not as good of a dad for her as I could be. When I go and invest in the massage and the cryotherapy and the float tank and the whatever else I invest in, it raises my frequency. It makes me love myself more and when when you love yourself more you love everyone more when you love yourself more you just show up as a higher version of you you're less judgmental you're less critical you're less um susceptible to negativity and drama of all kinds you know what i mean when you're just like fully basking in your own self-love all you want to do is love on everyone actually when i was on my way into water fusions yesterday i noticed this guy on the side of the road and he didn't he looked pretty down and out looked like he might have been homeless but maybe not just like a, you know maybe just down on his luck or whatever not living the best life and i noticed him at first he was like digging in the side next to this trash can looking for a cigarette butt so he could smoke the the bottom half of someone else's cigarette that they extinguished. And I've been there. I've done that. I've pulled cigarettes out of ashtrays before, so I know exactly what frequency that is. It's very low. It's very sad. It's very lonely. It's very unhealthy. It's just a toxic way to live. And, I'm, and I noticed that since I was in such a space of self-love, I didn't look down on him at all. I just, like, my heart flooded open for this guy i pictured a wave of golden energy coming up from the cosmos or coming down from the cosmos enveloping his whole body and helping raise his vibration and letting him know that he is loved and i put my hand on my heart and just sent him all this energy and you know maybe it would have been more beneficial if i stopped and pulled over and tried to talk to him but you never know it's like some people aren't in the space to listen so all you can do is love them. 
But my point for bringing that up is five years ago when I didn't love myself, I would have judged him. Look at this asshole. And and it wasn't that he was just like listen, looking for a cigarette. He was also very angry because he's... He took his skateboard and he and he swung it like a baseball bat and knocked over somebody's sign. And it was a it was like an advertising sign for a yoga studio. So here these people are doing some good things, bringing some yoga into the neighborhood, and he's gonna go knock their sign down out of anger or whatever. And then I notice him like pick up a, I don't know what it was like a, just a rock or something from the side of the road and like throw it at a car. And he just, like, looked all angry, and he fucking, like, punched this other sign and then, like, flipped off this car. And you, you could tell he was just very angry and sad and just totally lacking self-love. And I was just like, man, if this guy realized how divine he is, because he's, he's just as divine as all of us. He's a beautiful, magnificent being, cosmic being, you know, that the same energy as us. He's just disconnected from that. And I just had nothing but love and compassion for him. And, you know, five years ago, if I would have saw that when I didn't love myself as much as I do now, I would have been like all all triggered by it and all angry by it because I would have, it's, we're all seeing mirrored reflections of that that's within us. So even then, part of the reason I sent him love and compassion, I said, wow, the reason I'm even noticing this guy is because this is a, the universe mirroring what's in me. And I'm no, I'm normally I'm just noticing all these super high vibe people, but there's obviously some deeper parts of me that are on that same frequency. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to notice it. And so I had love and compassion and forgiveness for him and for myself. Because we are, there's really no difference, really. And I just was like, wow, I, I hope this dude finds some self-love. I hope he realizes that he's worthy and that he's a beautiful being that deserves this love and he you know he deserves to be in there getting a massage and drinking ten dollar superfood elixirs just as much as i do so i just was it was a beautiful little moment where i just i didn't get triggered i didn't get angry i didn't want to go do something about it i didn't want to i just wanted to love him and i just wanted to hold space for him that hopefully he'll find some love for himself because we, you know, we train people how to treat us based on how we treat ourselves. So obviously he's treating himself like shit and the world's probably treating him like shit. And that's why he's probably angry. Or sad or lonely or he's taking it out in these crazy ways. And I'm, I don't know his situation. He might have had some just unspeakable hardships. But we can grow from those hardships. And we can, some of the people that have the most love in this world have gone through the hardest things. Look at Nelson Mandela. Look at Mother Teresa. Look at, actually, I don't know Mother Teresa's story. I can't remember if she was like going through a lot of suffering or not. I'll have to look that up. I just know she was just like done good things in the world. So it's like a first example that came to my mind. But anyway, like a lot of the most compassionate, most loving beings on this planet have really gone through the hardest shit. So you make your mess your message. Turn your pain into your paintings. You know, turn all your hardships into art and to value for the world. Like, I wouldn't be on this podcast helping anyone if I hadn't gone through some shit. All of my music is just, here's me overcoming my hardships and challenges and spreading love and being a, a positive light for so many. And that's why people like it. And that's why my music is blowing up right now, because people are really resonating with that energy of like, using pain as a fuel to make your life better and to help others. Everything that I've gone through, I just thank the universe for. Like, thank God. Like, right now, the last, like, last several years, I've gone through some just really hard money challenges, to be honest. And, like, I'm so grateful for it because it's helping me. Like, I'm going to go make the best money course there ever was. I'm going to get super fucking rich. I'm becoming super rich. I've already been super rich and as a spirit, but now I'm allowing myself to receive the financial equivalent of how rich my heart and my spirit is. And I'm going to help so many people that are struggling with money. I'm going to help them overcome it. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I hadn't gone through all the challenges. Like if I hadn't gotten a car repossessed and been evicted and been homeless and been 
I've stolen food to eat, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've fucking stolen diapers for my daughter when she was first born because I didn't have money for them and I was too embarrassed to ask anyone to help me. Or I felt like no one could help me anymore because I ran out of everyone that was down to help me. I already They already helped me and I couldn't ask them again. Like, So I've been there and I'm grateful for it because it's helping me grow. It's helped me learn so much and... Everything that the universe puts in my way, I'm just going to overcome it and I'm going to help other people overcome it. So the fact that I've been de depressed before is the biggest blessing. The fact that I've been completely unhealthy before is the biggest blessing. The fact that I used to eat nothing but fast food and guzzle like a gallon of soda a day and wake up to like four cigarettes and a cup of super sugar-filled coffee or something like that. Like, I used to have terrible habits, so I'm not coming here preaching on a high horse like, look at me, I'm fucking, I got my life dialed, you need to step your game up. It's more like, yo, I've been there, let me help you rise above it, because I don't want to see you suffer as bad as I did. I don't want to see you suffer as bad as some of the people I see out there suffering, so I want to help, that's why... I make this podcast, that's why I make my YouTube videos, that's why I make my IGTV videos, that's why I make all my social media posts and all my music and everything I do and my coaching practice, like, it's all to help people and that's just in my nature, like, when I was in fifth grade I learned how to do a kickflip on a skateboard and I immediately taught, like, seven other people in my neighborhood how to kickflip for free because I wasn't business-minded back then, <laughs> but... Actually, I was business-minded, but I didn't think you could charge for something like that. And I didn't even, like, I wasn't, like, I was living on my parents. I didn't need to. So, I, like, I immediately was just like, oh, my God, I spent so long trying to learn how to kickflip. And I was just, that's all I wanted to learn. And, and it's, uh, it's a really difficult thing to learn when you first start skateboarding. Like, the ollie and the kickflip are, like, the two things that are just really difficult. And then once you can learn those two tricks... You can learn like everything else because those are the foundations. But I was like just so inspired and compelled to help everyone. And I did, I just set up a workshop and I told him exactly what worked for me. And we sat there in my garage in my driveway and I kept coaching them and guiding them and giving them encouragement and support. And if they got even remotely close, like, dude, you almost there, you almost landed it. Uh -huh. Let's go, dude. One more try. Try that, dude. Like, if you just, like, slide your foot just a little more like this, dude, you're going to land it. Uh. And I'd get so stoked for them. And guess what? Every single person that I taught or that came to, like, my little skate workshop, they all learned how to kickflip within a day or two. Something that took me months to learn, they're learning in a few days. So that's just in my nature. And it's like, I want this podcast to be that for you, to be like that for you. Like... I don't want it doesn't need to take fucking five years for you to get up all these off your bad habits and step your game up on your health. Doesn't, you know, because you have people to look up to. You have mentors and, and guides and coaches and people that can help you. So anyway, I was just like, I was sitting there in that massage chair thinking about all this stuff, thinking about how I've been programmed to think that like self-love was super indulgent and I only deserve the cheapest, lowest quality, off-brand stuff, you know, like when I was when I was growing up, like I was blessed I lived in a middle-class house with two parents and like you know, they they weren't balling out by any means like but we always had enough, we always had more than enough and even though they were always stressed about money that didn't stop them from like putting food on my table or giving me clothes to wear. But I did have, I have the Adidas with, with the four stripes instead of the three, you know what I'm saying? The pay less fake ones. Cause my parents are like, why do you need these name brand ones? Like we can get you these other ones that pretty much look the exact same for like a third the price. And you know, and like even with cereal, like we grew up, we didn't eat like, we didn't eat like, um, frosted mini wheats or whatever like the kellogg's brand we ate like the off brand that was like you know such and such shredded wheat compared to a da -da 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 brand you know like we ate the uh the off brand stuff and so i realized that where all this programming came from thinking that i didn't deserve luxuries 
I didn't deserve, and I'm still like trying to program that in. Like, you know what I mean? Like that. I see some of my mentors, they fly first class and I'm like, dude, I'm fucking lucky. I just feel so abundant and so blessed to be on an airplane in general. Like if I can afford a plane ticket somewhere, I'm just like, holy shit, dude, I'm balling out. What's, what's good? Let's go. Uh, look at me. I'm traveling the world. Yeah. I'm fucking thriving. And then some of the people I look up to, they're just like, oh, I would never fly coach. Like, I only fly business class or first class. And when I first started listening to that, I was like, oh, that's kind of bougie or whatever. And then I realized it's their own paradigm of self-love and what they think they're worthy of and what they think they deserve. And they they genuinely feel like, oh, I'm going to get more work done. I'm going to provide more value to people. I'm going to get better rest. So... I'm going to show up at this seminar or this coaching session or this mastermind as a better version of myself because I took first class. So it's an investment in themselves. And I'm just like, okay, damn, they're playing at a way higher level. And like, I just study anyone that has a lifestyle that even remotely resembles anything that I would like to live. And I notice they all invest in things that I would have thought are like these crazy luxuries. You know what I mean? That like, like, they don't just stay at a Motel 6 because, oh, it doesn't matter. It's just a place to crash and whatever. Like, no, they stay at a nice place. They get a five-star hotel or something. And it, and it, these material examples are just examples. Like, I hope you take them as, you know, not everyone cares about first class or a five-star hotel But it's a metaphor and an example for, like, the types of things. Like, maybe for you you buy organic food instead of that because you really value your energy and your health or you invest in a higher level mentor or coach to help you work through the problems because, you know, you're just, you're investing more in yourself because you want more out of life. You want to live an extraordinary quality of life or maybe you buy that self-development book that's like a tiny bit of a financial stretch for you, but you know it's going to help you level up in life. Like about a year ago, or maybe less than a year ago, I invested in like probably the most expensive book I've ever invested in at the time. And like, you know, before, like I would have said, like anything over 20 bucks for a book is a fucking joke. Like I'll get that from a library that who's who's got the nerve to charge me more than 20 bucks for a freaking book. And this book, I just wanted it so bad. It kept calling out to me. It's called The Abundance Codes by Regan Hillier and Juan Pablo Barahona. I've talked about them on multiple episodes. They're two of my um, biggest spiritual mentors, like multimillionaires, super healthy, traveling the world, helping tons of people, doing awesome work. And I really wanted to work with these codes and the sacred geometry and learn the wisdom that they had in this book, but it was $120. I didn't have $120. At first, but I just kept wanting it, and I, you know, eventually within a few weeks, I had 120 bucks, and it was a stretch. Like, there was probably other things that, like, a quote-unquote responsible person would, like, circulate that money towards, but I chose to invest in myself by buying that book, and it changed my life. And, And going back, knowing that what I know now, I would easily pay over $1,000 for that book, no problem. Even if I had to do it on like a credit card or something, because I know how valuable it is now. But I had to take a leap of faith and like, I don't know if this book's going to be worth it, but I really feel called to read it. So I'm going to buy it, even though it seems like a bit pricey, but I'm just going to get it. And I did it and it was one of the best things ever. And like, you know, within like a week of reading that, I made way more than that. Um, I'm pretty sure within a few days of buying that book, I got down, I got like a couple high ticket coaching clients that like were 10 X what that book costs. So, and I hear all of my coaches and mentors talk about like they, you know, like one of my mentors, Catherine, she, she was telling this story about how she invested 170 K in spiritual and personal growth just within like 48 hour period. And she's invested way more than that. She's probably up to like $2 million now in terms of what she's invested in coaches and masterminds and seminars and workshops and trainings. And, you know, she's certified uh, hypnotherapist. She's a certified NLP practitioner. She's certified Reiki, um, like a master Reiki healer. Um, she's just like 
got all this amazing business knowledge and she continues to invest in herself and she just keeps making more and more money and more and more and more money. And she keeps looking healthier and healthier too. Like I've been following her for years and it's just like, it's beautiful. To see. She's just glowing now. Like her aura and her skin and her eyes and everything like that. It sounds like I have a crush on her, but it's like a spiritual self-development crush because I'm not like <laughs> into her like that. But you know what I mean? Um, She's telling this story how she invested 170k, and this was like a, this was years back when that that was like a substantial amount of money to her, into like some some mentor some programs and some coaching. And then she went on to have her biggest month ever and her biggest year ever, partially because of the wisdom that she learned from those investments. But also on like an esoteric spiritual level, just because she just got out of her own way. She stopped playing small and she took a quantum leap investing in her growth. And so by doing that, she's telling her subconscious, she's telling the universe, she's telling her nervous system that she's worthy of an amazing life. She's worthy of being in the top tier of like entrepreneurs and thought leaders and all these other terms that you want to use like to describe her she's just like becoming even more and more remarkable every day because she keeps investing in herself so and that's just one example all my mentors ooh, it's 824 right now uh oh, love it all of my mentors have like countless stories like this of how they invested in these high ticket things and then their life just got better and better so I started doing that on smaller levels, you know, like one example I just gave you is that book and um, an example I'll give you just from the other days I invested in, I was sitting there meditating at this water fusion center, drinking in, in a, a beautiful drink that, see, you know, it was out of my comfort zone to buy a $10 drink at first. Because my mind immediately goes, well, I could get like, I could go to the store, I could go to the, you know, especially my whole self, I could go to like some place like Winco, which I would never shop at anymore. Um, and I could, I could spend 10 bucks and that could feed me for a week and a half. Da -da -da. Like I could buy for all this stuff, like cheap ass stuff. And if you've been on like the top of ramen kick, you know, you know what it's like. You're like, Oh, I could, you know, buy so much stuff for 10 bucks versus just this one meal. But it's, I felt so good drinking that one as like, I felt better than I've ever felt. And I was looking at their brochure and I noticed they had this program. It's 40 bucks a month for a membership where you get unlimited alkaline water, unlimited use of the oxygen bar, unlimited use of the massage tables. You can use their brain tap guided meditation devices. And you get this DNA scan, which is normally way more than that if you went to any type of doctor or whatever. Like it's a $40,000 piece of equipment that he has to scan your DNA, and I did that today, which is, I'll tell you about in just a second, because it was life-changing. And you get unlimited alkaline water, and then you also get $2 off all of your drinks and, and smoothies and um, snacks, and then you get whole food, or like um, wholesale pricing on all their supplements. And they carry the highest quality supplements known to man. So I noticed, like, dude, if I buy even just a couple of these supplements and a couple drinks and fill up my five-gallon water jug a couple times, like, this membership more than pays for itself. And I, I'm not getting, um, I'm not getting paid for this specific shout-out. This is coming from my heart. Like, I am talking to Water Fusions about some type of deals like that. But for now, this is just, like, coming from my heart and... I really, um, and I don't care if you go to Water Fusions or if you're in a whole other country and you go to some other place like that, but I invested in myself. I, I took the plunge. I said, okay, 40 bucks a month. And at the time, like, that might not seem responsible. I got all these, like, expenses to meet and bills to pay and whatever and things like that. And then, like, it was at least, you know, a somewhat substantial amount. It's not like a crazy amount, but I was thinking about, like, I, I probably spend way more than that on dumb shit anyway. But still, nevertheless, to, like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw $40 into, like, my health and wellness per month. I, I, I spend way more than that on foods and supplements and things like that anyway. And I was already spending money to fill up my water jug. 
And if I was going to get like nice alkaline water like they give you, I'd be spending even more. So I knew this membership would more than pay for itself and it seemed like a no brainer, but I did it not because of all these things that I was going to get. I did it because I'm training my subconscious, my nervous system, that I am worthy of being on a higher vibration and investing in myself and I want more energy and more vitality and more health and better sleep and better fitness and better skin and better brain function and all these things that come with it. And I want to be around these type of people. Every time I've gone in there, I've had extremely high vibrational conversations where I walk out of there just feeling like a new man. Like I've, I'm learning all this new stuff. I'm getting inspired. I'm connecting. I'm getting that human connection that we all need, which is what we've talked about how important that is. And it's just like a beautiful thing. And now it seems like a no brainer. And now that I've been in there like three or four times since then, I'm like, yo, I would pay 400 bucks for this membership just to be around this energy. Luckily, I don't have to. It's only 40 bucks, but like I would now that I know how valuable. And that's what all my mentors say when they make investments. They're like, yo, I, I bought, I paid this absurd amount of money for a coach. You know, he was $10,000 a session and I thought it was crazy. And who am I to drop 10 G's to talk to this guy for an hour? And now, like, knowing what I know and the shifts that he's made, I would pay 100000 So, like, this is my version of that. And I'm going to keep progressing and keep investing more and more in myself and more and more into raising my vibration. I invest so much time into meditating. I invest time into exercising. I invest time into being out in nature. I invest in anything that can improve my life because I want to serve and give and it's not selfish. It's like I want to give and serve and help more people. So in order to do that, I have to help myself first. It's like the oxygen mask on the airplane. They tell you, put your oxygen mask on first and then your kid because why? Well, you're not going to be able to help your kid get their oxygen mask on if you're suffocating and you're dying. So we got to help ourselves if we want to help others. We gotta fill up our our own pitcher so we can fill other people's glasses up. If we're, you can't pour from an empty cup. You can't give out anything that you don't have. So if you want to be the most loving version of yourself, then you need to love yourself more. And yeah, maybe sometimes that's like a CBD bath bomb and a luxury juice and did it and all these kinds of things that I'm talking about. Another form of self care is just saying no to old friends, to old habits, to things that don't serve you, to things that don't feel like a complete 10 out of 10 in your body. You know, and it, it it might be saying no to ego things. I've said no recently to things that could boost my ego, like being booked on certain shows that I know I could go post online and get a bunch of like praise to my ego about like, oh, look at you performing with this big name. Like, damn, dude, you're killing it. And like, I get this big ego boost and I feel all cool about myself and it's like I got to say no to that because I, I truly love myself and I'd actually rather be meditating and actually rather be with my daughter that night or I'd actually rather be in nature or or just some some reason doesn't feel right and it's like so that's also a big form of self love is like the discipline to do what feels right to you and the, the discipline to to say no, like one thing I'm really disciplined about is my phone usage. Like I don't use my phone. Lately it's been like I don't even turn my phone on until noon. And I'm just on it less and less these days, even though I'm running all this business that requires social media. I am, I guess it doesn't require it, but I choose it makes it easier, so I choose to use it. And I'm investing in like saying no, not replying to certain people, not engaging in con like a, a form of self-love that I just did before this episode is I was scrolling through Facebook. I see an advertisement for a coaching program that I was interested in. And naturally, when you see a post like that, you start scrolling through the comments. And the first, there was a comment from this dude that said like, are you kidding me? Two grand plus to come spend a day with you and I have to and I have to fly myself to LA and, and back like <laughs> give me a break and like just talking hella shit on this guy because he's charging 
what he's worth. And this dude's brilliant. He should be charged more than that. I, I was like shocked to when I saw that comment. I was like, oh, it's only 2K. I would have thought it was at least 5K. But, you know, I was noticing this troll or this hater or this person that didn't like. Oh, shit. I almost spilled my drink. Um, notice this person that, you know, thought that, that that price was ridiculous. And you'll see comments like that all the time. And there's people that I've ha I've had those same comments about my beats. Like, they, hey, man, I love your beats. How much you charge for beats? And I'll be like, oh, it's 300 bucks for an exclu for exclusive rights, which is actually cheaper than it used to be, 400 And it's probably going to go back up. But uh, I was like, you know, I'd be like, it's it's 300 or 400 bucks. And they just, like, not reply. Or they'd be like, ha, ha good luck with that, homie, or something like that, you know. And I, so I've gotten those comments, too. And it's fine. Those are not my dream clients. Like, it's like, I have no problem. If you don't want to pay full price, like, hey, much love. Have a good day. <laughs> I want to be busy serving the people that actually are ready to invest in what my products and services are worth. And they're not cheap because they're valuable. And the more I learn about business, it's like there's the transformation begins with the transaction a lot of the times. And if people don't pay, they don't pay attention. I used to give out all my stuff for free because I thought I was being noble. Like people be trying to buy my CDs and I'd be like, no, 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 just take it, just take it. Even though I needed the money, like, or I could really use the money. I was like, I'd give it out because I didn't feel deserving of it, of receiving. And I didn't, I, I didn't want to, I wanted to be noble and I thought people would like respect me more if I gave it to them for free. But actually, you know, my paradigm shifting where people actually want to pay you, they want to support you, and they're going to appreciate your stuff more if you let them pay you. So, and if they invest more skin in the game, they're going to take stuff seriously. Like, I realized I wasn't charging enough for my coaching programs because some of my clients were like being lackadaisical, not doing some of the stuff I was talking about, or not being, not caring whether if we met up or not. And I was like, all right, maybe I need to charge more and get some real skin in the game because I want people to actually show up. I'm not charging you a premium because I'm greedy and I want nice shit. I'm charging you a premium because I want to change your fucking life. I want to help you up level. And if it takes me charging you like a real amount of money that actually matters to you, that's what I'll have to do. You know what I'm saying? So like, because if I charge you too little, like let's say for like I... You might have had a similar experience where you got something for free and you didn't really pay attention. Like how many times have you gotten a free ebook or a free masterclass online or a free seminar or something and you either didn't read it or you didn't attend it or you didn't show up or you didn't watch it or you didn't implement the steps that they said or when you did watch it. Like, I don't know. If you listen to a podcast, say, say you listen to this podcast right now. And it was free. You didn't pay anything for it. Some of you might have because of the Patreon support, but that's for more than just the podcast. That's like music and my whole beingness. But let's say, let's say I gave you like three action steps in this episode and you just like casually listen to it for free. You might, you may or may not do it. But let's say I charge you 10 G's for this episode. And I would never charge someone that much for a single podcast. Or maybe I will, but, um, that that's going to be down the road when I've fucking really proven how valuable my work is. Let's say I charge you 10 G's. You're going to listen to it like it's your Bible. Just like I did with that book, that Abundance Codes book that I paid $120 for. I read every single page of that book front to back like three times, did every single thing it said. I was like, yo, I invested in this. I'm getting my money's worth and then some, and I'm going to do everything they say to do. And then meanwhile, I'm looking at three books next to me that I got for free from the library. Haven't even cracked them open yet. They've been sitting here for a week and a half. Haven't opened them. Uh, I've, op I've opened one of them, and I read like the back part of one another one. <laughs> but I guarantee if I paid for all of these, I would be reading them like they're my Bible, like they're just so important. I got to get as much value as I can from them. So that's that's the whole, that could almost be a whole other episode. And then I kind of got off track. <laughs> but anyway, I saw this guy saying, oh, two Gs, that's ridiculous. And I, I hit the reply button and I started replying to this st complete stranger. 
And I was going to say, like, something like, those who see the value in this guy's work are going to realize that, like, 2G's is nothing compared to, like, what he's doing for people. And um, I'm, like, I'm trying to, like, argue to a stranger that has nothing to do with me and whatever to try to prove some point. And I just stopped halfway through. And I've done this a few times lately where I've I've seen something on social media that I maybe didn't agree with. And I want to add my two cents. And I'm never negative or rude, but like I sometimes want to add my perspective. And I just catch myself halfway through and I go, <laughs> boom, close down your phone. Go do something that's really serving humanity and go love yourself. Because like, that's an act of self-love right there. Putting down the need to be right or the need to prove a point or the need to be liked. These are all forms of self-love. When you give up the need for everyone to like you, that's an act of self-love. When you give up the need to be right, that's an act of self-love. When you let go of trying to prove your point, that's an act of self-love. When you let go of an argument because you'd rather, you probably heard that old saying that like, you, you know, I'd rather be happy than right. And that's so true. It's like, do you really need to prove how smart you are, Burnell? Do you really need to like, Put your perspective on everything like no dude like and that it's an maybe you don't love yourself enough and you're trying to validate that and make people love you by like offering smart perspectives or whatever the hell i was doing you know and i catch myself multiple times you know almost about to disagree with someone and then i just i realize oh this is not an investment in my higher self this is not the highest and best usage of my energy Okay, cool. I'm not judging myself for it. I instantly forgive myself for it, but I just stop at my I stop in my tracks and move on to something that's going to be good for me and good for others. So that's a huge act of self-love that people don't talk about. And they think, you know, self-love is just you know, sitting there in a bubble bath and that 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 can't be self-love and you know, I do that shit too every day. But it can also just be like letting go of your ego, doing the things that are hard, doing the shadow work facing your demons, facing your fears, you know, forgiving, forgiving your past, healing your trauma. These are all big forms of self-love that are not like pretty. They're not fun. Like, you know, taking an ice, ice bath is an act of self-love. It doesn't mean it's like, it's super pleasant. Well, that actually, it is really euphoric when you, when you do it right and you breathe right. But, um, a lot of things, a lot of forms of self-love are difficult they're challenging they're you know saying no to someone that you've been friends with for 15 years because they're they're no longer serving your highest and best interest they're not helping you propel to where you're trying to go so it might be uncomfortable to say no to them or to you know like for me i'm doing all these things that are they're not comfortable but it's because i'm loving myself more and more it'd be so much easier for me to just like keep smoking pot with my old homies every day it'd be so much easier for me to stick in my old habits and routines but that was that was just revolving my life i heard i saw this amazing meme yesterday on instagram that i reposted on my story because it was so good and it said Look at your daily habits. Are they causing you to evolve or revolve? And I was just like, boom, that is so amazing. Look at your daily habits. Are they causing you to evolve or revolve? Meaning, are you just repeating the same circumstances over and over again because you keep doing the same habits? And it's not e it's not that easy to break habits. I'm going to do a whole nother episode. I've done a few, but I'm going to do another episode soon on just like really how to transform your habits um go back and listen to some of those episodes if you haven't yet but i'll do some more soon too and it's just like it's so true it's like you can if you keep doing the same behaviors your life's just gonna keep being the same that it's always been you're gonna keep recycling the same experiences but if you try something new go past your comfort zone it might be difficult but then your life is gonna get better you're going to evolve instead of revolve. And uh, yeah, it's just like, it's so important to, to realize that self-love and self, self-care self is, is sometimes difficult, you know, oftentimes difficult. Like, 
it's hard to change your ways when you've been doing things a certain way for so long, but it's worth it and you deserve it. And everyone that you love deserves it too. Like, we're not just doing this self-love for ourselves, we're doing it for the entire planet. And if more of us love ourselves, then the less of us have to, like, the less we got to go take care of people, and the less, you know, the less people are in jail, the less people are in hospitals, the less people are struggling, like, a lack of self-love is one of the biggest plagues on our entire planet. People don't realize how divine and how beautiful and how amazing they are. So they treat themselves poorly and they do bad habits that hurts themselves and hurts their pl hurts the planet that we all live on together. And then other people have to go save them and bail them out and spend all this time and money trying to help and heal others because they didn't love themselves enough. And it's just like... It's such a simple yet profound concept that it's just like the more we have to we have to be the change we wish to see. If we want this planet to be a more loving place, then our inner being has to become a more loving place. If we want this planet to be more connected, more united, then we need to be more connected and more united within with ourselves, with God, with the universe, whatever you want to call it. If we want this whole planet to be healthier and happier, we gotta we gotta be happier and healthier. We literally have to be the change that we wish to see. And I've I've heard that quote for years, and it's a cliche that we've all heard. But I'm I'm now embodying it more than I ever have in my life. Like I'm working with the Utah Permaculture Collective to be the change, and because I was I started getting into healthy eating and wanting to grow organic food and rather than just talking about it or judging other people for not doing it i'm like yo i want to i'm act i'm actively helping more sustainable permaculture gardens and you know more food and medicine being grown in my city in my state and that's just a start but i'm act actively being the change that i wish to see and I, i'm never going to be perfect but I'm, I'm becoming better and better at just like embodying that change and being on that frequency because I'm, I'm, I look around and I see all this suffering and pain and hardship and, you know, disaster in the world. And I'm like, damn it, I'm contributing to that by like, you know, I've been buying, for years I was buying plastic water bottles and eating uh, fast food and giving my dollar, which is my vote, to companies that are raping the earth and killing humans, you know? It's like I used to drop eight eight bucks every couple of days on a pack of Newports that are just killing me and lowering my vibration, and now I don't do that anymore, and I'm just, I'm grateful for that. So I urge you to just, and take it a step at a time. This is not all an overnight change. This is just one small act at a time, so... Your homework for today is what is one investment that you can make in yourself within the next 48 hours to improve your level of self-love, to help you feel more deserving, more worthy, more empowered, healthier? What's something that you can do for yourself that's going to benefit all of us? Because if we all fill up our own cups, then then we're all thriving and you know we don't have to be a burden on anyone else or hurt this other stuff if we're if we're overflowing ourselves then we're in a space we can really give back and we can really make an impact so think about what's one thing that you can do for yourself that's going to raise your vibration whether you know if you're in uh if you're in utah maybe you go to water fusions or you go somewhere like that and you invest in a membership or you you get a dna scan like i said um i got i said i would bring that back up earlier um, I got this DNA scan today, and it's like, holy shit, this just told me all the nutrients, and it's a $40,000 machine that you put your hands on, and um, I didn't even do the full scan. The full scan is like $120, bucks. i am going to do that next week. But the scan that I got, which is just, it just came like as complimentary part of my membership, I just found out like five or six minerals that I'm extremely deficient on that I need to get, like fulvic acid and... Um, iodine and um i can't I have to look at the chart there's a bunch of them um and different vitamins like such as b2 that i was deficient on and then he showed me some um 
super high quality supplements and foods and kind of coach me on some different eating habits that I can do. And he, much to my surprise, he said like my body was really acidic and I was like, what? I eat like nothing but an alkaline diet. Like nothing but alkaline diet. If you look at a chart of what an alkaline diet is, like that's what I eat. And I drink nothing but alkaline water. And yet my body's acidic and he and he showed me that was from shallow breathing. And I was like, damn it. And I do breath work and meditate and bre every day. And he was like, you just, you know, a lot of us will get this deep breathing during meditation, but... The rest of our day, we're breathing shallow. And I've been breathing shallow this whole podcast because I just want to keep talking and talking. Oh, so that's like my journey right now. I was like, I'm going to really... And I thought I was already like leveling up on this breathwork stuff. And I was like, damn it, I really need to step my deep breathing game up. And I'm going to just do everything I can into that. And that part of that was like... That's part of why I invested in this oxygen bar... That's part of self-love, and sometimes self-love... He asked me a bunch of questions after he did this scan, and I had to be brutally honest with him on certain things, and I learned a lot about myself and a lot about how I can improve my overall life just by, like, a few small changes. And they're not going to... You know, some of them are easy, some of them are, like, not as easy. Like, it's easy for me to buy a couple supplements and start taking those, but to develop to retrain years and like, you know, 20 something years of shallow breathing, that's going to take a little work. It's not going to change overnight. But, and you know, and this whole DNA scan shows you like whether what's, what's coming from genetics and what's coming from environment and what's coming from your diet and lifestyle. So I really recommend doing something like that. But anyway, I recommend just like finding at least one thing. And I want you to, if you're listening this far in, you're a diehard super listener, quantum badass, ready to take your life to the whole, a whole new level every day. I want you to message me. What's one thing that you are committed to investing in within the next 48 hours? We'll say like in the next like five days tops. And I'm going to hold you accountable. Message me, tell me I'm, I'm going to go do a, my first float tank session, or I'm going to go uh, get a subscription to this thing, or I'm going to go buy this supplement that I know I've been needing, or uh, when I was grocery shopping, you know, when I go grocery shopping tomorrow, I'm going to buy all organic, or, you know, whatever the, you know, there's different different strokes for different folks, but tell me one thing that you're doing to invest in your self-love. Maybe you're meditating for the first time, or you invest in a new book, or you get a, a new meditation app, or you do something cool like you buy one of those chili pads for your bed that, you know, circulates cool water under your mattress so you can keep your core temperature down and get into deeper sleep. Or maybe it's something super simple, like you're just going to take the day off to chill in nature or to just chill and take yourself to a movie or something. Like it doesn't have to be big, but I want you to be committed to it. And I want you to message me and I'm going to hold you accountable and make sure you do it. And then what I want you to do from there is just like soak up the the good feelings of how good it feels to do that to yourself. We're often giving to others. We're often meeting everyone else's demands and everyone else's requests. But, you know, if you really prioritize giving to yourself, if you make like your, if your meditation and your exercise and your healthy eating is more important than replying to those texts, your life will get way better because you're going to have to give to your, you're giving to yourself first. If you if you think res responding to the outside world's demands and requests is more important than getting your meditation in, you're doing a disservice to yourself and to them. So I want you to just like feel how good that feels to give to yourself and to nourish yourself and to love on yourself because you're beautiful and you deserve it. Think of yourself as a little child and think of like a loving of yourself as the loving parent of your inner child, like... Think of your higher self is this loving parent that wants what's best for you and you're just this you're your little inner child and and it's your birthday. Let's just pretend and your higher self wants to just give you the best birthday ever and just really take care of you and love on you and nourish you because your higher self loves you so much. 
and wants you to thrive. So allow yourself to receive that. And notice how good it feels. Message me and tell me how amazing it is. And then just keep committing yourself to up-leveling. Commit yourself to just doing better and better every week, every day. Do another activity that raises your vibration, that improves your level of self-love and worthiness. And then just keep going and, like, you know, dedicate for the rest of your life to just keep doing that. But start small. You know, I'm all about, if you listen to like the very first episode of this podcast, it's all about starting small to win big. So just do one little small act of self-love and kindness to yourself. Notice how good it feels. Really soak it up and absorb it. And like I'm like after this podcast, I'm about to go eat these little superfood bites that are just beautiful. And it's like an act of self-love that I bought myself these little superfood bites instead of like the super processed protein bar that I normally would have bought at the gas station or something. I bought these superfood bites from uh, Water Fusions and they're so delicious and you feel so good when you eat them and I'm going to go indulge in those and then, you know, every day I'm just committed to doing more and more self-love and so I can really be the best version of myself and give back to humanity in a big way. So that concludes today's episode. I really appreciate you listening. I appreciate you listening to my heartfelt rants on YouTube and IG. I appreciate all of you guys who are messaging me. It just means the world every time you listen and you tell me a specific thing that you got from this podcast. Like, you know, I've had multiple people tell me that they've get, they're getting off drugs or they got off drugs or they stopped smoking or they started meditating or they started working out or whatever. Lights my heart on fire. And it helps promote this podcast and impact more lives. So if you do that, you can message me on Instagram at Burnell Washburn. And then if you really feel compelled to support my spirit, my being, and this message that I'm spreading and this work that I'm doing in the universe, check out patreon.com slash Burnell Washburn. I'm going to be sending out 10 unreleased songs to my Patreon supporters soon. So I'm really excited about that. And there's some different cool incentives for supporting at different levels, but whether you want to throw 5, 10, 20 bucks a month, it means the world. It goes a long way. It helps me keep this thing alive and thriving and helps me impact more people. So you can directly um, make a positive investment in our, in our whole planet's ascension if you want to go check out patreon.com slash Burnell Washburn. And uh, just anything you guys do to spread the word just always means a lot if you're copying and copying and pasting this link and sending it to, you know, one person that you think will get value from it. Because if you got value from it, then someone else you know will get value from it too. So let's keep this train rolling. Let's keep spreading the good vibes and keep loving on ourselves because we deserve it. So I love you so much. There's infinite possibilities, infinite potential living inside of you. You are a magical being. There's nothing that you can't be, do, or have. And uh, yeah, this this universe is yours. So Go make the rest of today beautiful. Go make the rest of this week beautiful. Message me what you're going to be doing for your new act of self-love, your, your next step. Because a lot of you are pretty good already at self-love. So what's the next level? What's something new a little bit beyond your comfort zone that you're going to invest some time or some money or some energy into? And I'll hold you accountable for that. And I look forward to seeing those messages roll through. So I love you guys. Thanks for helping this thing grow. Thanks for being who you are. Create an amazing rest of your day and your week, and I will see you soon on another episode.